it's definitely time for coffee. Still steaming a little bit there. And it's definitely time to unload another glaze load from my gas kiln. And I'm so excited because that is one of the best things you can do in the whole world of ceramics is unload a kiln, especially a glaze kiln. So let's go. Alright everybody, here we are at the kiln. Time to open the door, give you a sneak peek, get you the first peek of the pots as always. Uh, I will tell you, first off, there are some bricks on the top shelf in front of some of the pots. I did that because there's a little bit of oxidation that happens in the front, I think due to this uh, porthole, uh, and so I put some bricks there to try to protect because I had some copper red pieces that were right there at the top, and I thought, well hey, maybe if I put these bricks here it'll protect them from some of the oxidation. So when I first open it, you won't see some of the pots right there on the top, but I'll take that down. Uh, also, we'll take a, a quick break after I do that to snap a photo from my before and after on Instagram. But either way, let's open the door. skipping up there on one but that's not bad if it's only one pot everything looks pretty good from what I can see it is jam-packed full uh, let me like I said pause here take a quick photo and we'll be right back all right there we go uh, I uh, one thing I did notice that I didn't notice before uh, I knew when I was glazing my root teal blue was a little thick uh, I had uh, emptied my large container into a smaller one, and I should have thinned it out a little bit. And uh, when I was dipping, I was like, this seems a little thick. And so I can already see there's some vases up there that it completely ran off the bottom. So that's definitely not good. Um, and it's a little bit lighter than it normally is. Um, so that's not a big deal to me or you as far as the color, but uh, uh, it is not good when I have four or five really nice vases that it completely ran off the base. So we'll, uh, we'll figure out what to do with those. But anyway, let's get uh, rolling. So here's, uh, I guess, first and foremost, here's the first porcelain piece. I did uh, copper red on it, and then I sprayed some of my purple on top of that. Like I said, it skipped a little bit here on the top. So not, uh, not loving that, but that's the only one I see of that. I did a couple other pieces with the purple. Uh, on top of the red, uh, but that red on top of the porcelain is definitely gorgeous um, Which is what I was hoping for but uh, Not optimal with that All right, here's one of the porcelain ones with uh, the strontium crystal magic under the uh, copper red and that's definitely cool uh, I did think uh, the couple pieces of porcelain that I fired so far uh, were ones that didn't have my rounded foot like this and I had some plunking issue with those and I thought if I rounded this base a little bit I would have better success with that and just at least with these first two that came out I definitely don't have any of that around the base and I think just having that rounded edge there really helps with that but um, that one's definitely gorgeous all right as you can see oh no yeah, there's one of them, and there's at least three in there like that. So, uh, I don't know what I'll do with those, but other than that, it's an amazing piece. Uh, some color in there that is just uh, insane. So, I'll definitely do this combination again on porcelain, but I'll just have to work on my rutile blue not being so thick. But that is freaking amazing some colors that are in here where those two combine mm. all right let's get one of the other ugly ones out of the way that's messed up uh, 
it could be that the rutile runs a bit more on the porcelain as well but um uh I, it was definitely too thick i know that um this one i tried my i've never done this combination uh it's my well i've done this two combination this is my other darker blue with the strontium crystal magic and then i just layered that over the uh rutile um not as much of a fan of that as some of the others but still kind of a cool combination Minus that would be really cool. All right, let me grab the third one that I know is completely run off. Uh, that one's upsetting because that is quite amazing. That is green tea over strontium crystal magic and then rutile blue at the base. And the way those two faded together. Um, <laughs> oh, Lord. Good gosh, that's a lot of runnage. <laughs> runnage i made a new word um but this gives me some ideas for future for um uh, i don't know if i test i don't think i tested one just with green tea and strontium crystal magic on porcelain that's something i'll have to try um but the, all of this color combination here is really sweet so yeah got a skirt on the bottom all right now to, to better things so here is one that uh, I thought that would show up more. I put, um, I took some of the porcelain slip and I smeared it on the side of this one. You can kind of see the texture in this one, um, but I thought it would maybe show through a bit better uh, with the copper red being on the porcelain and it has a little fluted base on that one. Still a pretty vase, but I would love to have seen that texture show up a bit more, kind of like peeking through, kind of like it almost did right there. Um, Maybe if the red was thinner or uh, if it did actually oxidize a little bit, it might show through a little bit better. But uh, it's pretty sweet there. Here's another porcelain piece with just copper red. That one was right on the edge with no um, brick uh, beside it, and it still got red all the way around. So I must have had good ox or good reduction this fire. All right, so here's that same combination of strontium crystal magic uh, green tea and then the rutile blue it did drip off just a little bit but i can either uh, i can clean those up most likely and have that be salvageable uh, but you can definitely tell the difference a little bit of difference between the two not extreme this one has a bit more of this blue in it which i do like um so yeah And there's some iron kind of showing through on this and not as much maybe in here, those little specks. Um, still both really cool. Alright, here's one of the porcelain ones that I did get. Oh yeah, that's good. So that's the copper red over the whole piece and then I sprayed my purple on kind of the shoulder area here to get an accent of that purple on it and I love how the on the porcelain the copper red goes white on the rim nice clean bottom once I sand that just slightly sweet all right here's a couple more copper red on the porcelain Kind of interesting that this got all like splotchy this time. My copper red normally doesn't do that. Oh, uh, I guess it, no, it did. It did before on the uh, on the porcelain. Um, so that one, I love the shape of that one. I guess I like them both. Now look at them, but uh, and those, like I said, didn't run off the base and got a good good color there and. Kind of wild. I love that white uh, rim on that one. Here's a uh, copper red with a strontium under it on a basic vase there without the fluted bottom. So yeah, you can definitely see the difference in, in the clays when I do that. <laughs> but the copper red, and this one for some reason turned kind of a shrimpy color, so that's interesting. But I might have poured this one on. I think I did. I think I held this one upside down and poured the red on, so it probably didn't get on as thick, which is part of the reason sometimes the copper red will not be as red. Um, 
Oop, that one skipped off a little bit right there. Here's one more that I put the uh, I put the slip on uh, the uh, the clay slip and then glazed over top of that with the copper red and the purple. And I like that. I love how the purple in there got all like modeled on top of the red. That's a sweet base. All right, here's one with my uh, Strontium Crystal Magic and my purple, which I put back there so it would get oxidized on parts of it, and it did, and I love that. That's pretty sweet. It doesn't run as much into the uh, purples, uh, some of the other colors. I like how it really streaks down in. Uh, this purple is a lot more stable, so I think it, it slows it down. I do have a bunch of pieces in this uh, kiln load for a uh, custom order for a local uh, tea room and bakery that I've made some pieces for. And so there's a bunch of teacups, little creamers, some saucers, some salad or uh, dessert plates. Uh, here's what I was talking about, like the streaking of the this uh, copper red and the strontium crystal magic into the rutile. I love how you get these long streaks down into this. I got a couple of drips on that one as well, but I think I can clean those up also. Um, but that's gorgeous, and I love the fluted base. Like I said, I, I kind of thought that rutile was a little thick, but I ignored my intuition to my own peril. I guess to the peril of my pot, right? Not my peril. All right, here's the uh, Strontium Crystal Magic and uh, over uh, under the purple on porcelain. And so I hadn't tried any pr uh, purple on the porcelain yet, and that that is pretty stinking dynamite and this kind of light blue up here yeah I think that's gonna be one I'm gonna revisit for sure there's a lot of like texture there that's like a stardust mm. and I love how smooth and shiny that is there that's and then this is kind of got a little bit more of a satin all right got some little vases here some strontium and copper red and then the same but over top of the rutile and that didn't run off the bottom so that's good oh yeah I love little vases here's a couple more so this is strontium crystal magic and green tea so you can see where the green tea and the strontium, uh, I, I only did the strontium to like in this area, but then it pushes more of the green tea down. And then this down here is the green tea by itself. But that blue and all that peacock looking color in there, that all comes from the combination of the two. But then this is more of like the raw strontium with just a little bit of the green tea over it. And this is uh, winter wood. Uh, Norse blue over winter wood there. I got a mess to clean up. Oh. All right, here's another small vase. So this is strontium crystal magic and green tea, and then the uh, rutile blue. Like I said, you can tell that it was on thick because it bubbled here, but it didn't go all the way off, so that's okay. But uh, that's a lot going on on a little vase. But like. If this rutile blue is a little bit thinner, you get a darker blue in this area and the even darker blue down here, which I really like. So not that I'm upset with that. And here's another, here's a cup in uh, went, uh, green, I mean, uh, Norse blue over winter wood. The color combination that happens in that transition point there is pretty sweet. All right. Hey, I don't have to clean up on that one any. Here's another one that's the Strontium, green tea, and uh, rutile blue. Look at those streaks in there. Woo! Yeah, look at that. That is pretty sweet. Inside is just the green tea. Because what I do is I, I dip a little bit of the uh, strontium and then I paint a varied edge of that. Let that dry. I would line it and then dip it in the, rutile, or in the uh, green tea to say maybe here. And then let that dry and then dip it in the rutile up to, you know, just above where the maybe overlap, maybe a half an inch and then clean the bottom off 
Um, so that's how I glaze those. All right, one more that's... Uh... Oh, yeah, look at that. Strontium green tea over rutile. Or rutile's on last, but yeah. <laughs> over top or on above rutile. I don't know how to say it. You know what I'm saying. I just explained how I did that. Oh, there's some cool little crystals growing in there. All right, thank goodness these are advancer shelves. Uh, I'll show you that other one here when I pull it out. What it looks like. Yeah. Thankful for advancer shelves and that glaze eraser. This stuff will just scrape right off. And don't even have to get a grinder out or anything. Not that that's a bad idea. Sometimes that is uh, advantageous to do that. But, uh, uh, yeah. I didn't quite have enough to fill this whole shelf. So this one I fronted so I could get a better photo. Uh, several mugs here in the... Uh, Green tea, strontium green tea, and rutile. Those are sweet. Man, look at that color. Man, look at how much is going on in that one. <laughs> that is wild. Hopefully the camera picks up how amazing that is. Whew. All right, here's a couple more. Another one that combination. This one is Norse blue over winter wood. All right, I finally made some more of these little uh, Demitasse cups. Uh, these are the Strontium Green Tea and Rutile Blue. have an order for one of these, but I don't know that it's going to match because the Rutile is so thick that it's probably not going to match what the lady has. And it's taken me like a few months to get back to making some of these, so I don't know. We'll see if she wants one of these or if I have to make more. Here's a small vase or cup. Could be either one there. And another small vase. Look at that. Look at those drips. Yeah. Alright, here's a couple uh, here's a couple bowls I did uh, of the porcelain. So these were copper red and I sprayed a little bit of purple outside and inside Woo! those bowls are sweet man good gravy look at that white rim look at this hope you can see that well and on the inside man that's another thing I love about porcelain So let's see. Uh, this is smaller, but still. Still has a ring, but not quite the same. <laughs> That's the smaller of the two bowls in porcelain. Oh man, I gotta do some more bowls in porcelain. Look at that. With the. Yeah, I think putting the purple over the red is. Uh, and look, got some green down there. <sighs> Well, the vases would have been more sweet if they didn't run off the pot completely. <laughs> All right, so this part of the order for the tea room, I made these little uh, cream pitchers that they can, with no, with no handle, just so that they can serve cream with their coffee and tea. I got these in like four different colors, but here's some just in solid rutile. All right, so these are little saucers I made to go under the uh, teacups. So uh, let me find a uh, uh, here's one of the teacups for the uh, Black Lantern Tea Room and Bakery to sit on a saucer. How cute is that? Just a spot of tea. 
Let's go have a spot of tea or coffee. Alright. <laughs> I'm not an actor, right? Uh, here's some with the strontium under the purple. And, uh, yeah. The rest of these are all solid rutile. So. And I do stack them like this until I sand them because the bottoms are a little bit scratchy and they'll probably scratch the glaze if I put them inside of each other until I get them sanded. All right, here's a shelf full of, here's a bunch of little creamers. I have some with uh, my strontium under my blue, the strontium under the purple, and I believe that might be it on this shelf, but... There's a bunch of little creamers. And a bunch more. And more. Here's a little vase with uh, strontium and the purple. I guess it does model similar uh, on the uh, stoneware, but it just is brighter on the porcelain. All right, we got lots of mugs here. I did try one mug in porcelain, and this one did have the slip on it to give it the texture. Uh, definitely not worth it considering it didn't show through. Um, but got a beautiful deep red on that one. Got the white rim. No plunking, which is good. It's a big mug, but. All right, here's a couple of the Demitas cups with the uh, strontium and green tea. Yeah, last time I fired, I had a couple pieces with the rutile that ran off as well, so. That's another thing that gave me pause about it being too thick this time. Thankfully, they didn't run off, but they did collect quite a bit at the base. Um, but these both are the strontium green tea and then the rutile. Um, so I need to thin that out a bit for sure. So I don't know how many times you got to mess up before you learn the lesson, but apparently for me, it's at least two. Woo, that one came close to running off there. Goodness gracious. That one not quite so much, but a couple nice mugs. Yeah, boy. Yeah, none of these ran off. That one came really close, but pretty colors, though. Man. Probably won't have this color combination again, though, because once I thin out this rutile, it'll be darker. So when I do an online sale, which I will be sometime soon, probably in early April. Um, I'll probably do a combination wood and gas fired sale um, and some of these will be on there. Here's some purple with strontium. Good looking mugs. Oh yeah, look at the red on those. See, now that red, I love this red right here. It's still a little bit mottled, but it's a lot more solid color than even on the porcelain. That's beautiful. And then with the strontium going down over it, and then it does this halo around where it pushed. I love that. That's some of the best copper red and strontium mugs I've had in quite a while, I think. All right, I have several of these now as well, this color combination. Once again, they turned out gorgeous. Definitely, with this kiln, it definitely helps having it more full to get a good, even reduction. You can pack it really tight, which I did mostly for this kiln. And get really good reduction for the reds to turn out. Just need to thin out that rutile a little bit. Here's some more mugs in the uh, Norse blue over winter wood. 
I should, I mean, I literally only dipped the Norse blue like to here and it ran that far. So that's, that's a lot of movement. Gorgeous though. One more of those. Hmm. All right, here's some strontium with the green tea. I love being able to get that green out of a gas reduction firing without it turning like red or mauve or pink. So thanks to Mako for making a green that works at uh, high temperature reduction and stays green. That one, not quite so excited about, but same color, just uh, might have dipped this a little bit thin on the base. Coat, not sure. But I also had an order for some uh, cereal bowls, but these are probably going to be a little bit lighter than what they have because they were added, trying to add to their collection. So we'll see because the rutile being thicker. Definitely made it uh, lighter blue. Yeah, also uh, that Rutil, you can see how much it ran on this one down into the base there. Yeah, I'll probably need to redo some of these cereal bowls. Now the ash on the outside looks great. But uh, we'll see what they want. But That one, yeah. That's a, that's a no. <laughs> Alright, here's more of those tea cups for the, the local tea room. I did some extras of these, so I'm going to have some for myself, or I mean to sell. Um, so, But these are for the tea room here. These are a couple that I'm going to have for sale. So that's pretty sweet inside. Ooh, man, look at that. That's sweet. A couple more in that glaze combination. That one definitely ran off a little bit, but that inside is pretty sweet, man. Keep going. All right, here's another color combination that I have for, will be for sale. That one ran off, but, so this is the strontium copper red and then rutile, but uh, once again, rutile, like I said, was a bit thick, but those are okay because they didn't completely run off, but <clears throat> almost ruined a, bot a lot. Also did some saucers in the uh, like navy and gold there because there will be uh, teacups in that column color to go as a set like that all right i did some plates in this rutile with the red slip this is for the tea room so some of those for some reason it seems like this back corner over here didn't get as hot because the rutile doesn't look mature and the slip didn't really melt as much so that was similar to that bowl that was in the same spot so something about that location also you can tell it doesn't have good reduction back there so something about that back corner as opposed to that back corner that did that more saucers that's a pretty cool one where it got somewhat oxidized and a couple more of the royal blue I had a, one on the previous shelf that did this I don't know what that is from but oh I bet I do well I don't know 
some of the, the shelves, I didn't know they had some moisture in them. And when I was preheating the kiln, I could see some moisture beating up. And I guess it could have dripped off onto these. I don't know if that would have done it or not. But, but it's only in the purple, so I doubt that's the fact. No, that's water drips. There you go. The others, I don't know what those are. But it's not water. See, that one's completely fine. All right, here's some of the more some more of the salad dessert plates. This one's with the uh, blue dots and the ash. So, a bunch of those. You can see once again that back corner over there. The ash is a little bit lighter, and the bottom is lighter color so it got oxidized we also have some swirl dessert plates salad plates brunch plates whatever you want to call them and then these little swirl saucers Whew. actually that would go better with that other so you got this saucer with this cup. Oh yeah. Like I said, how cute. <laughs> like I said, a bunch of swirl plates. Turned out great. Here's some of the uh, teacups. A couple more in that color combination there. Different, well, this one has the, so the same blue, this one has the strontium under it, and these two don't. Here's some with the. Uh, Strontium under the purple, and then the ash glaze on the base on the outside. Here's some more cereal bowls, kind of in that, uh, for that order I was talking about. They had like four different styles of cereal bowls. They were trying to match some. Alright, we got some more swirl trays and a couple dessert plates I wondered temperature wise how this bottom shelf would be because uh, I couldn't see my cone as well because I forgot to raise it up like another like two inches and so I cut it off a little bit early and this bottom shelf also was shorter than I normally do and uh, so one of the things is this blue is pretty, but it's actually it's it's got a little bit less of a sheen to it, and so that's interesting to see. Uh, but also, that is weird. So that is uh, Norse blue over winter wood, but the Norse blue or the winter wood is like blue. That is crazy. Okay, that one's better, but still different. All right. Okay. So yeah, like I said, you can see there the blue is a little bit different, but it's still the same kind of blue. Uh, but you can see it on that one there. That one's definitely more satin matte than shiny. It almost went like uh, a lighter shade of blue. Not almost, it did. <laughs> yeah, here to give you an idea. Uh, so that blue on the base of that is the same blue as this. 
top of the kiln versus lower in the kiln. But normally the lower part of the kiln still has this color. I just didn't get it quite as hot. And like I said, that shelf was lower. So it made it even more cooler because it didn't get, you know, normally I, ha I like to have like a nine inch shelf or so in the bottom. And that helps just the heat of the bottom of the kiln. But you can see the difference in color there. Just one that was by the burner versus this one that was over farther, so. Yeah, I was curious to see this uh, green tea with the uh, strontium, but it looks good, even at that uh, temperature. Didn't change a whole lot compared to the top. The green tea by itself on the inside of that is pretty nice in the bottom. Really nice color. I like that. All right, these are for the tea room. So these are the purple with the strontium. Mm. Well, I say they're for the tea room. That one, some of these may not have gotten mature enough glaze wise. See, that's fine on the inside of that. One of these was a little bumpy, so. Yeah, these two are okay. All right, here's a couple in the uh, copper red, and then a couple with copper red and strontium. Got a little pink shrimpy color on that one. Mm, not my favorite, but as you all probably know. Yeah, that uh, winter wood definitely doesn't look as good down there, I don't think, as it does farther up. These are okay, better than the bowl that I pulled out earlier. Uh, yeah, like that. <laughs> what happened? I'll probably refire these. Yeah, there's no sense in not refiring them because uh, they look really weird doesn't it's funny because I, I know winter wood is a cone six glaze as well so it's not like it's not mature but I don't know all right one more Woo! strontium over green tea definitely one of the winners of this kiln is that color combination I love that peacock look in there I love how shiny and then how satin this is when I first tested this combination, that was one of the things I loved about this combination uh, from that video a while back when John was here. Uh, but that color combination on the and on the inside of these teacups, that is amazing because you get to see all that and just think of drinking some tea or coffee out of that. And then when you finish, as you finish, you get to see all those colors emerging. That's pretty sweet. So, all right. So I'd say overall, very good kiln. Uh, lost a few based on my glazing errors and then uh, just a couple pieces for strange reasons and then a couple pieces that just probably didn't get hot enough or had some interesting things in my kiln happen. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Thank you all as always for, for being here, supporting the videos and the channel and on Instagram. If you, if you don't follow me there, I do have an Instagram, I have Facebook, I do have a Patreon. Um, and yeah, so that's that. And, uh, like I said, I'll be putting out some dates soon. I do have a, sh uh, we'll be firing my wood kiln in about a month. Uh, the week after I fire my wood kiln, I have a show in Hickory, North Carolina, the Catawba Valley Pottery and Antiques Festival. And then, uh, I think early April, I'll plan to do a, an online sale. And then I have my kiln opening for my wood firing for number seven here at my place the last weekend in September, I mean, not September, uh, April. Uh, so it's like the 20 something. I can't remember now, but anyways, the last weekend in April, the weekend after Easter, uh, we'll be doing that here, uh, in conjunction with the celebration of spring event here in Seagrove. So there's that. And then, uh, the summer we'll get, uh, like I said, in April, I plan to get back making some more pieces for my gas kiln, some crystalline and some other things. So, but right now it's, uh, uh, other than this order I had to get out for the tea room and a few other pieces I had made, it's like a busy time for making pots for the wood kiln. 
I already have all the wood prep done. Uh, most of the shelves are clean. The kiln floor is already clean, so we're, we're pretty close to being ready other than pots being made. So, uh, and I've got a decent amount made, but I've got a lot more to do in the next three weeks I think I have left to make pots. So anyway, like I said, you guys are awesome. Thank you for all, for, all for your support, and we'll see you in the next video, whatever that happens to be. All right, have a good day. See ya.